Can I win with an entirely yellow Pokemon team? Well, I'm not sure, so let's find out. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle session. Today, we're having a battle against Cassie, otherwise known as Oshawott's, from the Discord server in the Smogon overused tier. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle, and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Oshawott's. So, they're going to lead off with Aquasaur, which is going to be the walking wake, as we lead off with Neck Game, the Raging Bolt. So... Uh, not a bad matchup for us. Um, we can definitely take any hit from this thing if we really want to. They can also take a hit from us if we really want to. Um, walking away does really well against my team. They probably expected a Ninetales lead, which is why they've led with this, which is fine. Um, so I kind of maybe don't want to stay in against this thing. I, I want to expect them to either switch out or go or go for a Draco Meteor. So I'm going to go into Ribombe. Ribombe can then outspeed... And take out the walking with a more, with a moon blast, which would be great if we could do that. So we'll go into Squire. Good old Squire, the Ribombe. They do go for a flip turn, which breaks our focus sash, which is unfortunate. That's a good play by them. They obviously expected us to switch out. I could have dropped a, a Dragon Pulse on them, but I decided against it. In comes Sundrop, the Torkoal, which is a good play. Now I need to be careful here because here's the thing. They have a Hatterene in the back there. So I don't want to stay in, in Sticky Webs just yet until that thing's gone. I do want to get the Sticky Webs up though because they have a quite a fast team. Um, but not until not until it's gone. So if we assume they're going to go into Hatterene here. Or they go straight for the Fire Blast to KO the Ribombe and then Rapid Spin later. We should switch out. I'm leaning towards the Raging Bolt to go for a Thunderbolt on Hatterene. And I am going to go for the Raging Bolt. I think that is the right thing to do because I think... I feel like they don't switch out Torkoal here into Hatterene. I feel like they, you know, they, they play on the whole, I'm going to wrap it in later. And they go for a Fire Blast. I feel like that's what they do. And um, we get that Protosynthesis and Special Attack, which is great and all. And then they're going to go for a Withdrawal. So they do withdraw. Okay, are they going to go Hatterene? If they go Hatterene, that's fine. Hatteras. That's, that's definitely the Hatterene, right? Yeah, so these things are normally like Calm Mind, Draining Kiss and stuff like that. We have got the Protosynthesis in, attack, in Special Attack. I could go for a Terra Fairy here, but I'm leaning more towards just going for a Thunderbolt instead. So I am going to go straight for the Thunderbolt play. Just get as much damage on the Hatterene as possible, as it nearly KOs them, which is amazing. They go for the Drain and Kiss, though. That's going to do a nice bit of damage, but it's not enough to get the KO on good old Raging Bolt over here. So what they could do now is the Popper Air Balloon. They could switch out into Gouging Fire, or they could go into the Venusaur. I kind of want to be ballsy and go for a Dragon Pulse. I don't think they want to lose their Hatterene just yet. So I do want to be ballsy and go for a Dragon Pulse. I really want to be ballsy and go for a Dragon Pulse. It's a risk, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. They do make the switch, and we do go for the Dragon Pulse. That is paying off because they go into Brute Root, the Venusaur. We're going to get some massive damage off with a Dragon Pulse right now. And that is going to nearly KO the Venusaur, which is fantastic. So now we can go for a Thunderclap and take this thing out. Um, do they switch out? Probably. Let's go for a Thunderclap anyway. They don't switch out. We take our Brute Root with a Thunderclap. Boom! We made a good play with a Raging Bolt, which is amazing. So that's that's awesome. That is awesome. Venusaur goes down. I think we did pretty well there to make that play. Aquasaur comes in, which is going to be the Walking Wake. This thing is fast. It's probably going to get a Processes in Speed. Yeah, Speed is. Um, do I stay in a uh, Thunderclap them? Probably not. Do they go for a Draco Meteor here out of like fear of us staying in? Probably. So do we go for a Ribombe switch? I'm going to say yeah. I'm going to say yeah because I feel like they go for a Draco Meteor here. Um, which is great and all if they do. Great and all if they do. But anyway, Ribombe comes in. They do go for the Draco Meteor which is great. We made the right play by switching into Ribombe. The sunlight is still up, so they are faster than us still. So we know they're going to go for a Hydro Steam here. But I haven't got a switch in. So poor Ribombe. Unfortunately, we're not going to get the Sticky Webs up. I am going to try and get the Sticky Webs up. But it's not going to work. They do withdraw. Oh, they withdraw. They must be Specs. They must be Specs. They go to Hatteras. Damn. I really thought they would stay in and attack the Ribombe. But no, we get the Sticky Webs bounced back to us, which is unfortunate. But we can get rid of them later. With our trusty um, hazard remover that we don't have. Ah, let's go for a moon blast. Let's get some damage off with a moon blast. Yeah, damage with the moon blast is fine. They go for a side shock. That's going to definitely KO Ribombe. 
Um, which is unfortunate. We lived on one HP. Okay, so that's fine. Harsh sunlight fades. Do they want their hatchery to go down? Probably not. So we go for a moon blast here. If we can get sticky webs up, it balances things out a bit. You know? So they withdraw. Okay, so they're going to withdraw. What are they going to go into to take a moon blast? Sun drop. That's going to be the tall cult. Then we can get the sticky webs up. Then we can get the sticky webs up. So drought comes through. We go for a moon blast. It's going to do no damage, obviously. Might get a special attack drop. Doesn't. We go for a sticky web this turn. If they bring Hatterene in, we just KO it with moon blast. Either way, we're getting these sticky webs up. They're going to withdraw now to avoid the sticky webs. They're going to go into Ivy, which is going to be the Leafy on, right? It's got to be based on that name because the Venus the Venus was dead. So Sticky Web comes through. We get that off on the nice and powerful Leafy on. Now, we don't... We do, we do, we don't, we do, we do. Do we stay in? I don't know. I don't know if we stay in or not here. I'm leaning towards not. I'm going to go for a Moon Blast. Because if they Swords Dance, it's all Ogre. So they actually Terrastalize. What type are they going to Terrastalize into? That's the real question. If I knew they were going to terrestrialize, I would have stun spawned. Terra ground. Okay. Oh, no. Is that rock? That's rock, right? Yeah, that's rock. Terra rock. So they go for that sword dance. I should have gone for a stun spawn. I didn't... Well, I didn't know they were going to terra. They didn't need to terra on the uh, Ribombe, really. But that Moonblast does a lot of damage, which is great. Now I am going to try and go for a stun spawn just in case. But they definitely KO my Ribombe here with a bullet seed. They are loaded dice. They've got to be loaded dice if they're that. And they've got Terra Blast Rock. So I think they have perfect coverage for our entire team here. Um, but all is not over. Because we do have the Raging Bolt with that priority Thunderclap. So I'm going to go into neck game real quick. And in this instance with the neck game, we 100% of the time always, always go for Thunderclap. Okay? We go for the Thunderclap. Thunderclap comes through. It's going to fail because they're going to Swords Dance, right? That's fine. Swords Dance away. At some point, they're going to decide, okay, I'm going to attack now because they probably won't Thunderclap. So we go for another Thunderclap. Because even if the, whether it's plus two or plus six Leafy on, it kills the rest of our team if we don't Thunderclap. So we Thunderclap again. They Swords Dance again. Fine. Go for your Swords Dances. Fine. This turn... Thunderclap again. We don't give up. We, we, we use, if I have to use all my Thunderclap PP, we use it all. Nope. There we go. See? That is how you win the Thunderclap slash Sucker Punch mind games. You just keep going for it. Eventually, they're going to think in their head. Right. This turn, they're going to expect us to go for another Swords Dance to stall out the Thunderclap. So they go for a Dragon Pulse. So we attack. That's how it always works. That's how, how I do it. That's how, I, I'm a sucker for it. I'm a sucker for it. Right. In comes Aqua Soul, which is, of course, the Walking Wake. Big threat, gets the sticky webs and all that, um, which is always nice. Gets the Protosynthesis in speed, though, which negates that. But it's still... We don't have a switch in, though. That's the problem. Um, so we have to just Thunderclap here. I, I think I just Thunderclap here. They might go for a Flipton, or they might go for a Draco Meteor. I think they can get away with just going for a Draco Meteor here. So I'd rather just go for a Thunderclap, get the damage off on the Walking Wake. Does about half, which is amazing. Hydrostein comes through. Oh, they did make the wrong prediction, but it still takes us out. Because it's choice specs, but they made the right play actually, because that's gonna hurt the rest of my team big time. The harsh sunlight does fade though. And the protosynthesis wears off. We don't really need nine tails. And Goldengo. Goldengo outspeeds here. So we go into Goldengo 100% of the time here. We definitely go into Goldengo. All they need to do is go into the Torkoal though. And they've pretty much, like, won. Which is the problem. So, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go for the Shadow Ball play. They actually stay in. <gasps> Ooh! We get the KO because of a Choice Scarf. Nice. They actually stayed in. That Walking Weight could have been the end of me. Really could have been the end of me. But then again, all it took was something with Heavy Duty Boots, right? So, Sun Drop comes in. Torkoal comes in. Sticky webs go into effect. Drought goes up. All we need to do here, well, the only thing we can really do here is go for a Shadow Ball with Goldengo. I know we can't take a Fire Blast, but they withdraw anyway, and they go into the uh, Gouging Fire, which is their only Pokemon left. 
Oh, Hatteras is raining. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot about Hattery. He's just kind of in the back there, like nearly dead. So I forgot all about it. But this gives him a free switch into Gouging Fire, which is really good for them. So Shadow Ball comes through. Nice bit of damage to Hatterene. Nice bit of damage. And down it goes. So Hatterene is out of the way. Hatterene is out of the way. They have Torkoal and Gouging Fire left. Escanor comes in. That is an amazing nickname for Gouging Fire, I will say. An amazing nickname for a Gouging Fire. They get caught in the Sticky Webs, which is fine. They get the Protosynthesis in attack. Defense. Ah, they're a bulky one. We 100% go for a Shadow Ball here to get the maximum amount of damage on this Gouging Fire as we possibly can. Because we do our speed bank to the Choice Scar. And that's going to do a nice chunk of damage to them. They go for a Dragon Dance. That Dragon Dance. They go for a Dragon Dance. That's not good. Hmm. That is not good at all. We still have Terra. But is Terra going to help us here? I say we go for another Shadow Ball. They can Dragon Dance all they want. I, I think we go for another Shadow Ball here. They go for a Heat Crash though. That's going to definitely KO Goldengo. But down it goes. They have got a Heat Crash. That's an interesting one. That is an interesting one. So with Heat Crash, I'm just, right. They're, they're leftovers as well, which is good to know that they're not loaded dice with Scale Shot. So what we can do here is we can go Armor Rouge and we can go for an Endure. So I'm going to go for Mordor. We're not going to be able to get the... Um, we're not going to be able to get the... What do you call it? The Weakness Policy. But... It's fine. We could risk and go for Terra Grass. Because they might expect us to Terra here, Terra Fairy, to, get, to be immune to the Dragon. And go for a Fire Type move. The Terra Grass Endure? I, I mean, there's no, there's no other Terra I can really go for. Right? So I I go for the Terra Grass Endure just in case they predict the Terra Fairy or something like that to be immune to the Dragon type move. Because there's, there's going to be a reason I brought over Armor Regime, right? And they're not going to expect it to be to Terra Grass in front of the Gouging Fire. That's for sure. So we go into this, we endure. Hopefully they don't Dragon Dance here. That ain't good. That is not good at all. That is not good at all. Because now they can Heat Crash us. We have to try. We, we have to switch out into Nine Tails. We have to switch out into Nine Tails. And try that again with Armor Rouge. That's what we have to do. So we'll go QB. We'll go QB. We'll get caught in the Sticky Webs and all that. It's fine. We don't need Nine Tails for anything now. At all. They go for a Breaking Swipe. That might not have even KO'd my Armor Rouge. Which is funny. They lower our attack, but this is this is all right. This is all right. If they've got breaking swipe, then we're actually all right. We want to we want the sun to disappear though. That's for sure, because that heat crash is too powerful. Just thinking what to do here. Let's go for a encore, just in case they dragon dance. They don't. They breaking swipe. They could have dragon dance, knowing we can't touch them. That's what I'm trying to get at. So does the sunlight fade this turn? I think it does, right? I think it fades this turn, right? Leftovers pops, which is fine. Does it fade? Doesn't. Ah, oh, no. I really thought it would. Let's go for it. Let's go for Kerrang. Let's go for Kerrang. And we... Mm, if we assume they're going to Burning Bulwark here, we should Dragon Dance, right? Because they have Breaking Swipe. They, de they definitely burn Burning Bulwark, right? Let's Dragon Dance because they have a KO us. They have a KO us with Heat Crash here. Which they do. Or they burn in Bulwark. But... If the sun rain, 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 rains out here, this is fine. I think the sun runs out this turn. If it doesn't run out this turn, then I have miscounted greatly. It has. It hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't. So Armor Rouge comes in. Once again. We get caught in the sticky web once again. And they've got two Dragon Dancers up, right? Yeah. They're plus one speed. Our weak armor makes us faster than them. We have to go for Endure again. We have to go for Endure again. I mean, it's the only it's the only thing I can think to do. Yeah, they go for the Breaking Swipe, which is great and all. Doesn't do nearly enough damage. <gasps> oh, okay. That's not too bad. It does lower our defense, though, which means the next Breaking Swipe will KO. The Harsh Sunlight does fade, though, which lowers their defense. But I don't think Stored Power is powerful enough. So we got... 
Hmm. We got the attack drop. We got the defense drop. I don't know whether the drops actually count. I don't think we can KO anyway. Let's go for a stored power. Let's just go for it. They go for a heat crash, which is going to KO us. And that's going to be the game. So, unfortunately, despite my try, I did try. But that gouging fire was just too much for this team. <laughs> I, 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 I failed miserably with that. But oh well, it, it is what it is. GG Cassie. Oh, sure, that was a fun one. I did enjoy that one. I think we made good plays on both sides. But, you know, to answer the question, do we win with a yellow team? Unfortunately, not this time, but maybe next time. And it's time for a bonus battle. Today's bonus battle is against Arknologia Zero from the Discord server in the Smogon Monotype tier. Obviously, like all Monotype battles, there is no terror involved in the Monotype battle. We've got Dark versus Ice today, which is a pretty cool matchup, I would say so. Interested to see what that Alolan Sand Slash is going to do to us in the hail, or the snow, sorry. Pilot Spine is also really interesting to see. Anyway, stick around to the end for the rental code for the first team we use, the Mono Yellow team. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Zero. So they're going to lead off with Cryonesis, the Ninetales, as I led off with my Overquill. I led with Overquill just because it does pretty well, like, you know... Typing wise against the Obama Snow and the Ninetales. We also get the Intimidate off, not that it matters against the Ninetales anyway. I do want to get the Toxic Spikes up because they don't have a Hazard Clear unless they have Rapid Spin on the Alolan Sand Slash, which they might not have. Or the Cloister as well, I guess. Um, so, but I am going to go straight for a Gunshot here. They may go into the uh, Sand Slash, but they haven't. They've stayed in sub that Aurora Veil, which is going to be pesky against us. Um, we go for the Gunshot and we do unfortunately miss. So that is a real shame. But it is what it is. Uh, let's go for spikes and get the spikes up. We may as well. We've got um, enough bulk so that we can take any hit from these things. They withdraw. They can't really encore us into Gunk Shot. It just wouldn't work out well for the Ninetales. So they go into Hyperthermia, which is going to be the alone. Oh, the Pile of Swine. Nice and shiny as well. That's a very bright yellow shiny, isn't it? Like, wow, I could have used that on my um, mono yellow team. <laughs> I didn't even realize Pile of Swine has shiny was so bright yellow. That's crazy. Anyway... I also kind of want to get the toxic spikes up, but I'm like leaning towards not at the moment because of the earthquake potential. But I don't really have the best switch in. I guess Greninja could work, so let's go Greninja. Pilot Swine's power output isn't going to be as high as Mama Swine, so I know I can definitely take an earthquake, no problem. Uh, with enough health to take a nice shot afterwards. So they do go for the EQ. Greninja should still take this as it goes. <laughs> really? <laughs> The critical hit. Unfortunate. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Got a couple of things we can do here. We could go into Mandibles and go for that uh, Defog. Get rid of those screens. I think that's going to be the most beneficial thing for us to do. Because then we can get um, Houndoom in. So I am going to go Mandibles here. Pebbles. Just to get the Defog off. I want to get rid of it. Like, yeah, he's getting rid of the spikes I set up. But at the same time, it's like... I just want that Aurora Veil gone. I, I can't touch their team otherwise. So we go for the defog. It clears away the uh, Aurora Veil. Which is fine. Spikes disappear as well, which is unfortunate. But the Aurora Veil is gone, and that's the main thing. They go for the Ice for Spear. Are they loaded dice? They are loaded dice, aren't they? No, they're not loaded dice. Okay, so that's cool. So no no loaded dice, which is great. Um, I do want to knock off their Violite. That's for sure. So that's what I'm going to do next. They go for an Ice Shard, though, to get some more damage off, which makes sense. That's going to get some da nice damage off. We go for the knockoff. Does no damage, obviously, but it does knock off their Violite. And um, as the snow does stop now, so we are in a very good position. So what I'm going to do here is I'm predicting the Ice Shard. I want to go... I want to go Overquill. I want to go Overquill, get the Intimidate off. They probably feel safe going into Ninetales against the Overquill. So I want to go... I, and, and like I want to go for the Gunshot on the Pilot Swine. They go for the ice shot. It's going to do no damage to us. Oh, this is a lot of damage because of another crit. What is going on? Why is there so many crits? I mean, it makes up for the freeze I got against Raymond the other day, yesterday. Anyway, I'm going to go for a gunk shot here, predicting the nine tails to come in or the Obama snow, one of the two. They do withdraw. Are they going to go nine tails or the Obama snow? I'm hoping so. Uh, cryogenics, that was the... What was that? The Bomber Snow. So the Bomber Snow comes in, which is great. That thing's not going to get the Aurora Veil up because we're going to get two Gunk Shocks off, right? Yes, there we go. That's the first Gunk Shock. Oh, nicely done. Nicely done. That wasn't even a crit. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we made the right play going for that. We made the right play. They did get the snow up. 
which means the Ninetales is going to be able to get up another Aurora Veil here, but you know what? It's fine. I'm not too fussed because at the end of the day, it's night, obviously. It, the fact that we got rid of the Abomas now is great. So I'm going to go for a Gunk Shot here in an attempt. They go for an Aurora Veil. And you know what? I deserve a crit here, but I'm probably not going to get it. But I at least deserve to hit the Gunk Shot, which I do hit the Gunk Shot. And that's going to do a clean 50% to the Ninetales and get a Poison, which is amazing. So that's great. Um, what we can do now is... We're not going to be able to defog again because we get outspeed by the entire team with the um, the mandibles. The mandibles are just set bait for the uh, the uh, cloister as well. So we pretty much have to just stay in and shot here, which I am going to do. They withdraw. Are they going to go into the pilot swine? Probably right. Hyperthermia. That's the pilot swine, right? Nice and yellow. It's so bright. Like it hurts my eyes looking at that. We go for the Gunk Shot, we hit it again, which is nice. Does no damage because of the defense boost that Ice types get, but we do get the Novel Poison, which is great. Overquill's finally getting some hacks back for us. Why is Overquill the MVP of this game already? Like, seriously. Anyway. Anyway. What do we do here? I'd say our best bet, because we've got, we've got, we've got, poor. Oh. I'd say our best bet's just to sack off Mandibles. That's what I think we should do. Sack off the Mandibles here. So we're going to Pebbles once again. They go for an Ice Crystal Spear, which is going to take us out. It's fine. It's fine. Because you know what they don't have? They don't have a special defense boost from the snow, other than the Aurora Veil. Um, and I'm pretty confident that we can go into Houndoom right now and just take this thing out with a Fire Blast. So I'm going to go into Cerberus. I'm going to go into Cerberus. They probably go for an Ice Shot to get some last ditch damage, which is fine. I am going to go for the Fire Blast, though. There we go. We go for the Fire Blast. We miss! What is this game? As they go for an EQ. And that's going to take us down to our Sash. What is this game, man? Like, you know, you know, for them, well, the, eye, the Weavile's got the Ice Shard as well. Cloyster's probably got Ice Shard. Sand Slash probably got Ice Shard. The Ninetales the only thing without Ice Shard, and it outspeeds us. So I guess we're not doing anything with this... Uh, this uh, Hound Doom right now. So let's go for a Fire Blast once again. They do go for the Ice Shot that takes us out. <laughs> I'm getting mad at this game, but it's like, I'm not actually that mad. Because like I get hacks like this all the time against my opponents. It just happens, you know. It's, it's just one of them things. Um, so anyway, Hyperfermi takes us out with an Ice Shot, but it is on Death's Door. I do want to go Meow Scroll and just Flower Trick into Oblivion. I really do. I think I will. Because that crit will bypass the defense boost from the snow. I don't think it bypasses the screens, though. Let's go for the flower trick and find out. Let's just go for it and find out. The ice shot, just to get some last-ditch damage off. It does over half. Is that crit again? It wasn't a crit. That's good. Flower trick comes through. It makes us a pure grass type. And boom. Pop. Down it goes. Which is great. So we've got a crit. Not that it matters, because that's always a crit. Pile of swine finally goes down. The snow should wear off this turn, right? Right. 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 Cryostasis comes in. That's going to be the Weavile. Uh, Weavile does outspeed us, but we are Choice Scarf. So, in a sense, it doesn't outspeed us. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it for when the snow's gone or the Aurora Veil's gone. Um, but they can just Ice Shard us. So, I want to go into Overquill if that's the case. I think I want to go Overquill here. Get the Intimidate off. I think that's going to be really useful against the Weavile. It could Swords Dance in our face, but I'm going to go into Spiky Boy real quick. Get the Intimidate off regardless. There we go. The Intimidate comes through. They go for an Ice Spinner, which is going to definitely sting a little bit, but not too much. There we go. Not too much. The Snow is going to stop, which is great. It means they lose that defense boost, that pesky defense boost they always get. And now we go for a Gunk Chop. Fully expecting the Ninetales to come in or something else. They do withdraw. Are they going to go Ninetales to get that sun, that snow up one last time? Cryonesis uh, is going to come in. Can we hit the Gunk Shot, please? That'd be amazing. Snow warning comes through. We do hit the Gunk Shot. Nice one over Quill. Down goes the Ninetales. So if the Aurora Veil wears off, it's gone for good, which is great. Just fantastic. So let's see how this plays out for us. I really hope. I, I think Overquill is going to be important in this game. Because the Aurora Veil has wore off. I think we could still pull this back. I really do think we could still pull this back. So Absolute Zero comes in. That is going to be the Sand Slash, which is a big threat. Um, 
Do we want... No, because they're going to have Ice Shard. So I think Meowth Skirada is our least valuable Pokemon right now. I really think it's our least valuable Pokemon. So I'm going to go into it and I'm going to sack it off here to the Sand Slash. They do go for a Swords Dance, interestingly enough. So we have got a chance here. Um, well, not really, but if, if if they don't go for Ice Shard and we outspeed because we're Choice Scarf, we get a free knockoff off, which would be cool. So let's go for it. We do get a free knockoff, which is great. Turn us into a pure Dark type. No damage, but we knock off potential Life Orb, which they did have. And they go for the Ice Spin. So that's going to be less damage output from the um, Sand Slash, which is great. So that's great. That is fantastic. The lack of a life orb is going to be great. So we have Protosynthesis and Speed on the Roaring Moon. But in order to pull it off, we're going to need to go into Overkill and get an Intimidate off, I think. A Roaring Moon could pull this back if the Weevil doesn't have Ice Shard, for example. I feel like, I feel like it does. Let's go for a Crunch. Um, they go for an EQ. That's going to take us out. But we've got the Intimidate off, which is fine. Which is fine. So Spiky Boy does go down. I don't see how we can pull this back. We're going to get Protosynthesis in speed, though, which is great. But I don't think it's enough to outspeed. So, Roaring Moon comes in nice and shiny. We're going to get that booster energy in speed, which is great and all. But, hmm, is it enough? Let's go for an EQ and find out. I, I don't think it's enough. I really don't think it's enough. So, they're going to Terror anyway. <laughs> We said no terror, but they know they've, they know they've already won. They know they've already won, so they're like, screw it, let's just terror. Fairy, oh, real. Why is it my opponents and like terroring on the last turn when we've agreed no terror? Like, seriously. <laughs> it's fine. I outsped anyway, so I could have potentially got that, but it, I probably didn't get that because if they were terror, I if they were ice type still, they would have got the defense boost, so they still wouldn't have KO'd. So it doesn't really matter. So it's whatever. Anyway, GG Zero. That was a really fun game. Um, pretty cool to see ice dominate dark like that. And I, I really like the way you did it with the Aurora Veil users in the snow. Pretty good game. GG. But anyway, here is the team rental code for the mono yellow team. Try it out if you want to. Use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you do try it. I want to hear your success stories. Maybe any feedback you've got on it and stuff like that. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.